All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna do an example problem on angle of twist. And in this problem, we've got a steel rod with a shear modulus of elasticity of 75 gigapascals and a hollow cross section and applied loading. Now this problem is a little bit more challenging because the loading that we're gonna have has a linearly distributed load. And what we wanna do is find the angle of twist of NC with respect to NA. And let me give you a schematic or show you what this problem looks like. So I have this axially loaded steel rod. It has a hollow circular cross section with an outer radius of 100 millimeters and an inner radius or inside radius of 75 millimeters. And the loading that's applied to this rod is a linearly distributed load that starts from zero kilonewton meter per meter or you know some twisting moment per meter to three kilonewton meters per meter. And then at the end of the rod here, I have a concentrated torque of 10 kilonewton meters. And I will label these points and C, B, and A, where A is the fixed support, B is where the, the distributed loading starts, and C is the end of the, of the axially loaded rod. And what I want to do in this problem is find the angle of twist of NC with respect to N A. And the way that I'm going to do this problem is very typical of many mechanics problems in that you have to start off with the schematic or some sort of free body diagram. You got to understand the drawing and then you got to make a bunch of cuts and calculate internal loading. And that usually requires using equilibrium equations for your cuts. And I like to do what I call identifying the discontinuities and cutting between discontinuities. And if you can do this right here, then normally what happens is that you identify the segments for which you have to calculate the angle of twist as well. And then last but not least, we're gonna apply the angle of twist formula and that'll require also some geometric properties, namely the polar moment of inertia, which is the area's ability or resistance to twisting. All right, so let's get to it. So here, here's my free body diagram, my schematic, my big picture view. I could calculate the reaction at A. If I make cuts and I look at the right side of the cut, it's gonna show that I, there's not gonna be a need for these reactions at A. And so the next thing I wanna do is determine internal loadings. And in particular, I really want the internal torques because all my other internal loads like normal force, shear, and bending moment, those are gonna be zero because there's no loading causing that. So I have internal loading, in, in particular the internal torques. I wanna identify the discontinuities. Those discontinuities are going to be at supports or beginnings and ends of distributed loads or at concentrated forces or moments. And here I have this point A would be a discontinuity because of that support. Point B is a discontinuity because it's the beginning of a distributed load. Point C is a discontinuity because I have the end of a distributed load and I also have a concentrated torque here of 10 kilonewton meters. And what I wanna do is now identify the cuts between discontinuities. And so these would be the cuts I wanna make. I'll call this cut one and I'll call this cut two. And then now we're just gonna go one cut at a time, draw that free body diagram of the cut and then apply equilibrium equations. So for cut one, so I make this cut at one, I, right now I'm ignoring the cut at two, and I, I'm gonna choose to look at the right side of the free body diagram because I didn't calculate the reactions at A. So here's my free body diagram for cut one, and technically for each cut, I need to also define a coordinate system for that cut. For this, the fixed point at A, which was somewhere over here, is a good place because it's a discontinuity as well. And a discontinuity is a good place for an origin for the coordinate system. So I could call this x1. And this distance between the cut right here and x1 would be three meters minus x1. Now I'm just doing this now just to give you a little background. It's not gonna come into play for this cut, but you'll see, that, see how it works or how it affects cut two. All right, so here on the cut one, you know, the internal loading that I have, I would have an internal torque here, which I will call TAB, because this is a cut between points A and B. This will be my internal torque between A and B. And now I'm just gonna apply the equilibrium equations. Sum of the torques equal to zero. 
And here I would have negative TAB. The area of the distributed load is gonna be the resultant torque. So one half the base, which is two meters times the height, three kilonewton meter per meter, plus the 10 kilonewton meters equal to zero. And when I solve this out, I'll get an internal torque in segment AB equal to 13 kilonewton meters. The coordinate x1 doesn't come into play here because it's constant between segment A and B. It's always 13 kilonewton meters wherever I cut it. So next I want to take a look at cut number two. And this is probably the more challenging of the of the internal torque calculations because we have to we're going to end up coming up with a some sort of torque function because it, the torque the internal torque varies between b and c depending on where you cut it so first i'm going to draw a free body diagram of that cut so i'm going to take this cut too and look on the right side of that free body diagram so here's my free body diagram for cut two where i look at just the right side and the internal torque here i'm just going to say boom this will be TBC. And I want to define a coordinate system for this cut. So I'm going to choose the origin, or I'm going to choose an origin at a discontinuity. And I'm going to choose the point B as my origin for the coordinate system for this cut. And I'm going to call this, so point B was somewhere right around here. I'm going to call that the zero for this coordinate system X2. So the origin, again, I chose at point B. And if I recall, the length of segment BC was two meters, which makes this distance two meters minus X2. Now, the one thing I have to know is that, hey, you know, this, this linearly distributed load got cut off and it looks like a trapezoidal loading. And I, you know, I don't know what this value is right here. This is some value, I'll just call it W. And I really need to know what this is as a function of X2. And the fastest way, and probably the easiest way to identify this is by similar triangles. And it's just remembering that at point B over here, this distributed load was zero. And if I just use similar triangles, the ratio of this dotted triangle, if you will, versus the larger triangle here, then I could have a relationship where I could say that W over X2 is equal to this three kilonewton meter per meter divided by that length of two meters. And this would tell me that the distributed load at this point, at any point X2 really, is three halves kilonewton per meter times x2. And now that I know what that distributed load is, I can go ahead and apply the equilibrium equation and solve for TBC. So here if I apply some of the torques equal to zero, and I would have negative TBC, plus this is the area of a trapezoid here, and that area is the average of the uneven side, so one half W plus three kilonewton meter per meter times the width two meters minus x2 and don't forget the concentrated torque here plus 10 kilonewton meter and all of this is equal to zero now all i gotta do is substitute this into here and just solve for tbc and when i do that here's what i will get and this is my internal torque in segment BC, which varies as a function of position X2. So now that I've found my internal torques for each of the segments that are relevant in this problem, I just need to apply the angle of twist formula. And really what I'm calculating here is the angle of twist of point C with respect to point A, which is really just the angle of twist of point C since point A is fixed. So this is technically the same as this. But in any case, this is the summation of all the segments, of all whatever segments I have that I can add up. And in this case, this is the sum of the angle of twist between point C and B plus the angle of twist of point B with respect to A. In most cases, you learn maybe two formulations. One you learn a formulation that looks something like this, this TL over GJ, which was only applicable when the internal torque here was constant within that segment that you were looking at. If that internal torque was varying as a function of position, then you had to use an integral formulation that probably looks something like this. 
So for us, we want to calculate the angle of twist of CB plus BA. And notice how these, you know, this angle of twist of C with respect to B and this angle of twist of B with respect to A, how it nicely corresponded with just our discontinuities that we selected. And I know that in, in segment BC or segment CB, whichever you want to call it, it varies as a function of X. So I'm going to need to use the integral formulation for that segment. So here, this phi this angle of twist of C with respect to A will be this integral of TBC, which is a function of x2, the integral with respect to x2, over GJBC. And J, or the polar moment of inertia, is constant. So I don't, I don't really have to worry about this as a function of x2. Plus the internal, the angle of twist of segment B with respect to A, which is which has a constant internal torque in that segment. So I can just use the formulation TBA, LBA over GJBA. So now if I just substitute my definitions of the internal torques, you know, I'm pretty much good to go. I can factor out the GJ here. This GJ is also called the torsional rigidity. And here I can factor it out because it's constant. In this problem, this is just constant. It's the same for the entire length. Now, if I just substitute the definitions of the internal torques, and this is what my formulation looks like. Now, one thing that tends to confuse some people is the bounds of the integral. And the bounds of the integral, I think a good rule of thumb that I've you know, that that's tends to work for me is that it's from discontinuity to discontinuity for that segment. And so if here, I had to find my origin at point B. You know, the coordinate is going to be from, or the range for which I'm going to integrate is going to be from discontinuity to discontinuity. And for that, x2 would be from 0 to 2 meters. And so here, this range is from 0 to 2 meters for my integral. And now I just need to do some math and just solve this out. Let's see this torsional rigidity. I can go ahead and calculate the shear modulus of elasticity is 75 kilonewtons per millimeter squared. And this, the polar moment of inertia, is pi over 2 for a hollow section, the outer radius to the fourth minus the inner radius to the fourth. And these equations are normally available on the inside cover of most mechanics textbooks. And if I just go ahead and I solve this out, I will get I notice that here in this formulation over here in the brackets, I've got kilonewton meters. So it'll probably be convenient for me So if I convert this into meters now. And to do that, I'm just going to do, let's see, one meter over 1,000 millimeters squared. And you know, I, I really like to be meticulous about doing my unit conversions like this just because I don't want to make a silly mistake. You know what I'm saying? It just, it ain't worth it. This becomes 8.053 times 10 cubed kilonewton meter squared. All right, so now I'm just gonna integrate, do some math and get a final result. And when I take care of the math, what I get is 7.823 times 10 to the minus 30 radians. And this is my angle of twist of point C with respect to point A. If you want to convert this into degrees, you got to just multiply by 180 and divide by pi radians. So this would be in degrees 0.448 two degrees. All right, hopefully that was an interesting example for you and helpful for your understanding of angle of twist as it relates to mechanics of materials. Take it easy. Stretch your feet.